Hey everybody, got another video here for you. Still working on guitar number nine. The uh, ferrules for the uh, 12 string tail tuner came in, the short type ferrules. As you can see, it's not as tall as a torpedo type, which is oh, probably about that big. But they're actually a larger diameter than a torpedo type and so they don't fit in these holes so now I've got some like quarter inch brass compression fittings on the way in order to see if I can get this sorted out and uh, so that's still on hold, which leads me back to working on this thing. And on this thing, these are now all leftover parts. And this is a leftover parts build. But put one on the front and one on the back of the headstock for your string through. And it's still too big. So can't use these for this build either, at least not on both sides. I could use it on one side, but then either you've got ball here, which is not that big an issue, and then cup here, which would prevent the wires from digging in, or you've got cups here to hold your balls for your string balls, but then you get your wires digging in. So, for the moment, nothing on this thing. Maybe once those uh, compression fittings come in, it'll be like the e-ticket ride for all the strength through stuff. So, um, this is now officially in the paint shop. And last night, off camera, I had at this thing with the fret erasers. And I used them to clean up both the fingerboard and then I use them to polish the frets and polish the ends of the frets because when I was sanding I knocked down the ends of the frets at the same time and that took care of pretty much all the fret work required for this neck because it's already level and flat and everything and it was just a little bit of less than glass smooth here and so I while I was sanding the the neck, I just sanded the ends of the frets at the same time, and then that of course left some scratch marks, which I then used the erasers in order to remove, and uh, it actually did a pretty good job. Um, if I go polishing compound, that could take it even one level better, but I don't want to do that until I've got stain on this thing because the polishing compound might interfere with the wood taking stain if I get, you know, compound down in here. <coughs> so, so, um, and then the other issue is the fact that underneath this clear coat, this original factory clear coat, um, the fingerboard itself is not really really smoothly sanded. It's maybe sanded to like 160 at most kind of a thing. So underneath the clear coat you can actually see vertical sanding scratch marks in the wood itself. And then at the top of the clear coat, since the clear coat wasn't really finely polished and has seen better days, uh, it's got some horizontal fine fine scratch marks left over from the uh, fret erasers. And I'm kind of thinking, go ahead and put the sink. Now the all the finish has been removed from the side, so only the very, very top still has been finished. And stripping that back could be problematic because sometimes it takes a fair amount of sanding to get down to bare wood that will take stain or whatever again. So I'm thinking go ahead and stain the thing and then maybe just clear coat all of it including the top again 
as well as like the sides, the fingerboard, and all the neck. So, and then, and then even if I don't clear coat the top of it, um, after it's been stained and clear coated, then I can come back and polish the fingerboard um, at that point. So, and it looks like the generator just ran out of gas. Let me uh, go gas it back up. I'll be back. Okay, got the generator gassed up again and up and running. And so this thing here, like I said, it's in the paint shop. I've got the fingerboard cleaned up okay for now. And um, the next thing I want to do is I want to spray all this stuff down with water in order to raise the grain. And then let it all dry. And then I'll do the final sanding to like, I don't know, 320, something like that maybe. And... Uh, and that'll get, that'll just, you know, clean up any dirt that's kind of embedded in the, in the wood or anything. It's really not that critical because I'm going to stain it black, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the next step is raise the grain and knock it back down with some sandpaper. And then it's uh, time for a dye job and uh, clear coat. And then I was thinking, once I've got it dyed, I want to see what it looks like. Because before I clear coat it, I might like, I might stain it black and then do some kind of a little cracked lightning bolt hand painted on thing in metallic gold paint. Just very thin lines. Something to make it more than just black, maybe. I don't know, I haven't thought about it too much yet, but I was thinking something like that might look cool or look cooler without just, you know, being, hey, it's a guitar and it's I'm just using it as a piece of canvas for a paint job, so. Um, so that's basically what I'm thinking as far as the paint shop work goes, and, uh, and I'm going to... I'll film the various steps in the process, just because it's it kind of sucks when, you know, they spend all this time carving on a beautiful guitar made out of 37 kinds of wood and laminated in 57 pieces and stuff. And then it goes in the paint shop and a miracle happens and it comes out and it's all like finished and you're like, how did they do that? Yeah, and they don't, and then, you know, they don't tell you that they spent a month putting true oil on it or something like this, so. But anyway, all right, so here we go. So, like an old Windex bottle and uh, rainwater from the rain barrel collected off the roof of the, of the shed here. And... Just kind of hose it down. Just lightly. This gets it about as damp as it would get if you were applying a water-based dye. I think that'll do it. I got all up to dry for an hour or two. Okay, everything is dried and has been sanded back to 320 and it's all smooth as a baby's bottom and it's ready for the dye. Okay, here we go. Key to wood dye in a black. Mixed with water, not alcohol. Maybe I should make it stronger. The 
it's definitely has a indigo blue ink color to it. So this is what it looks like after the first coat, and I think I'm going to give it another coat.
So, it's gotten two coats now, and it's time for a naphtha test. That looks pretty nice. Stuff dries fast. I think it looks okay so far. Yeah, I think it'll do. A little hard to tell it's drying so quickly, but yeah, I think it'll do. That's a shadow, that's not wet. All right, done dying. So I got a piece of cutoff here and I just put a first coat of black dye on it. I'll give it a couple coats so it matches the other stuff. And then I'll use it as a test to try out the idea with the gold paint. See if it's worth doing it on the guitar itself. Okay, it took three applications of dye to get this thing looking black but it got there and then I broke bad with the this is the gold paint that I use for painting screws and such and that's some of the silver I almost never use the silver and uh, so yeah little mini paint brushes from Amazon and uh, these are the kind of results I'm getting and it's looking pretty cool as far as the look and all it's just a matter of I got to figure out some cool design or pattern to put on using this method. So I guess I'm off to search for inspiring images on the internet or something like that. The other thing I have to do is I have to wait for this to dry and then I have to squirt it with lacquer to make sure the, lac the, the gold and the silver doesn't run when I shoot it with lacquer. So. Yeah, and then, assuming that works, then I can search for images. Okay, there it is. One coat of lacquer. No build to speak of. Sanding sealer, basically. But it worked. No runs. So, yeah, this is going to work. And then for a... Uh, I dug up a couple photos of... cracked concrete got that one and another one similar to it and I can use those as inspiration for painting my cracks so to speak so yeah um I think I'm gonna give that a try and put it on the front of the body the back of the body the headstock front and back put it on the back of the neck and uh, on the swing bar as well and thumb screw and the bridge block. Not a lot of these, but just a few lines. Kind of like that has just a, has like this one big one goes that, it's got one big one this way and then another big one that way and then a couple of littler ones, but not a whole lot of cracks, so yeah. In, a, in an area like this, I'd probably have maybe half as many lines as I have going on here. But yeah, so that's the plan. Okay, this is after two coats of lacquer. And it's starting to build some sheen. And you can see some grain. And I think this is like right about where I want to be with no sanding whatsoever. So yeah, I think this is where I'm gonna what I'm gonna shoot for as far as like the level of clear coat goes. Uh, like two coats of lacquer, no sanding. Gotta remember it's already been the the guitar, not this stuff, but the guitar has been sanded back to three. 20 already so it's actually smoother than this thing is 
So, yeah, now, uh, and I've been practicing. did all this here in yeah there you go silver and gold trying to make thin lines it's hard I got so far as to try painting with a with an 8 gauge guitar string and no, it didn't really work out steel guitar strings don't hold paint well uh, I got another one here. Where did I put it? Um, ah, here it is. There we go. Oops, got some black on it by accident from being on the bottom of the pile. But, yeah, this is basically the kind of idea. I think I'll go for something sort of like this across the whole guitar. And then, of course, it'll be on the black background, so... Okay, time to have at this. While I've been known to make an interesting graphic or sketch or two in the day, it's literally like one or two. I am by no means an artist. So, um, I'm not going to embarrass myself by filming this. Since it's stained, there's no racing, there's no going back. If I mess it up, I mess it up. So wish me luck. We'll see what happens. Part of the reason why I'm not going to film this is because if I film it, I feel under pressure to get it over quickly so that you all don't get bored. And this is not the kind of thing that you can rush. I mean, it's like you have to be so careful about how barely close you get the brush to the surface of the guitar because if you put the if you get it just right you can get a thin line like that kind of thin if you push just ever slightest bit harder it's going to get thick like like over here so, yeah, it's, it's really meticulous. It's really delicate. So, yeah. I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to film it. Wish me luck. Okay, so here's the gold. And if you look, the cracks run all the way around the guitar all the cracks run all the way around the guitar so at this point I'm not so sure it really needs any silver I think I might just run with this and here's the neck And once again, it wraps around to the front and sides where it can. I mean, you know, fingerboard's in the way, but yeah. So, that's the neck. And then I got to uh, do the swing bar in little bits. And there's the swing bar. And once again, they all, all the cracks line up from one side or edge to the next. So, yeah, continuous stuff all the way around. Even on the ends. So, yeah. I think that's going to take care of the swing bar. Now I need to do the, uh, oh, I missed a spot. That crack doesn't match up. I'll have to fix that. 
Yeah, just a couple little bits, thumb screw and bridge block are the only things left. So, there's the bridge block. And once again, they all connect. And the only thing left is the thumb screw. And there's the thumb screw. And once again, they all match up across the corners and edges and stuff. And I even did the bottom. Same way that I did the bottom on the bridge here, too. This is the top of the bridge block, and that's the bottom of the bridge block. So, yeah. And I'm quite pleased with the results. Well, if you, uh... Put the clear coat on too heavy at first, it makes the gold paint run ever so slightly. And I got a little bit there, and there's just a hint of it in there, and you can see it here for sure. Let me get the glare off it. Yeah, there you can see a little bit of running, and a little bit there. But fortunately, it's not too bad, and it's it only happened on the neck. I was starting to get a little heavy on it, and it caused a bit of running, and then I realized that that was an issue, and so I, I went light on everything else, and it all turned out fine. So, But yeah, if you're trying this technique, if you're using the, the gold or the silver, I actually... I was thinking of calling my buddy earlier, the guy that I made the Cowboys guitar for because the first finish I tried on the Cowboys guitar used the silver paint and I had this issue with the silver paint running because I was laying the clear coat on hard and heavy at first on that particular guitar finish and I ended up refinishing that guitar finishing the guitar three times before I finally got something that that we were both happy with so, um, so yeah, if you're doing the gold or the silver, and uh, that it, it does work with clear coat, but you just can't go heavy or else it will make it run. So first one, just do like a misting coat and kind of seal stuff. And then I'd still go thin at first until you get a little build up. Since I'm only going, you know, like, kind of two coats kind of a thing I'll probably end up going like maybe three super thin coats on this stuff and that's it so but yeah in general I'm really really pleased with this really pleased with the outcome even with the bleeding all over with the bleeding I think it's not that bad thank God thank God Okay, it's out of the paint shop. Um, take a look at the neck here. A little bit of a run there. Uh, the worst one is right here. And it's not that bad in effect. A little bit of a bleed. Just got a little bit on these two right here. That's the worst part right there, and there's a little bit right there. And other than that, it turned out okay. They're all pretty, pretty much um, not smeared. And the rest of it all turned out perfect. I mean, look at this body. Nice, sharp lines. Yeah, just the effect I was looking for. Gloss levels on the maple versus the pine. It's a little glossier here, but um, overall I'm pretty satisfied. Looks like the trick is, is that even after you've got like a coat on to more or less seal it, um, since lacquer melts into itself, if you put on a normal amount of lacquer, like uh, 
like normally you would take this and you would just spray it until it uniformly just looked wet to put a coat of lacquer on it but if you put that much lacquer on it's going to melt in and it's going to make your stuff run a little bit so you can't even go a, a regular coat of lacquer until you built up enough that it's not going to melt all the way down to the to the gold or the silver so um yeah it works you got to be real careful but it, apparently it does work so so that's something that I might be able to use again going forward um right now it's time to get started putting this thing together and of course there's going to be a ton of detail work I uh, gotta clean up the fingerboard fortunately this is all water-based dye so it should just come off with a tissue and a damp tissue um, let's see what else needs doing the next screws need to be painted and uh, this I painted that before I clear coated it so that parts done uh, the pivot screw for the swing bar that's going to need to be painted and uh, other than that I think uh, I think that's about it for the final prep work clean up the nut here probably come up clean at the same time I hit the fingerboard um, side marker dots I don't think I'm gonna worry about them I mean me personally I don't really use them that much I usually like to just barely be able to see over the fingerboard about like that and then just I use these dots I mean these things are so small but I never really noticed them anyway and in general when you're when you do look down at the fingerboard if it's tilted this way you can see what you're doing and you know eventually everybody wants to get to the point where they don't really have to look at the fingerboard anymore and they can just do it all by feel because that way you know your eyes you take your eyes out of loop and that allows you to concentrate more on what you're playing and so you can play more fluidly and faster but enough of this and that I'm gonna build a guitar not talk about playing techniques and stuff Well, damp tissue got the worst of it, but there's still a couple spots. You can see a little bit of black in here, and also right up here, and a little bit on the nut. So, it's basically, you've got dye and or lacquer on top of a clear-coated fingerboard, and there's two methods for removing it. Uh, one is chemicals and the other is abrasion and so I'm starting with chemicals and slowly escalating until I get success or yeah until I get success so I've tried water and water got most of it um naphtha would be the next thing It's not really getting anything.
getting a little something. Okay, up here it's clear lacquer overspray on top of dye. I should have cleaned the dye off before I started squirting the clear lacquer. Um, I think I might try lacquer thinner on a Q-tip to try to get that out. Down here, I think it's just the imperfections in the finish on the fingerboard itself and I cleaned it up once with uh, fret erasers and they might work again to get this stuff Yeah, that works great. Okay, after fret erasers, we're down to just clear coat wear on the fingerboard. A little bit there, and that's it. And at this end, um, this green is from the green fret eraser. And that pretty much shows you where there's still overspray lacquer. And the nut still needs a bit of, bit of help too. Backside cleaned up okay. This shelf is all but clean at this corner. So, so um, I think I'm going to give uh, lacquer thinner a shot. Okay, I was uh, getting ready to put this thing back together here, as you can see, and I'll be getting into that in just a moment. And uh, while I was gathering up all the tools and parts and stuff, I decided to jump online to the Rust-Oleum website to see if they had a answer. Okay, I think that's going to do it for this video. So, until the next one, everybody, have a good one.